Hi guys, welcome to my channel. U S The Unlimited Stories. Please subscribe, like, and share, and press notification bell for more upcoming videos. Morning, good day, and uh, how are you doing? I hope you're doing great. And also to all my subscribers, I hope you're doing great. And thank you so much for subscribing at my uh, channel. And uh, this video, I'm gonna show you um, the astronaut habitat found in Hawaii. And if you want to know their habitat, just watch this video. And uh, promise you will uh, learn a lot on the astronaut habitat so enjoy watching hi so most of us are probably never going to be able to go to the moon or to mars but here on the big island of hawaii 8,000 feet above sea level this white dome is called high seas and it's a habitat where researchers and scientists are studying what it might be like and preparing to get to the red planet and to the moon i'm going to go inside check it out and then see what it's like to live as an astronaut this rocky, crazy, beautiful terrain. High C stands for Hawaii Space Exploration, Analog and Simulation, and it was built in 2013 on the site of an abandoned quarry. The habitat accommodates six astronauts and has sleeping quarters, a kitchen, two bathrooms, and even a space to work out. These workstations let you talk to Mission Control or all the outside world, but messages are delayed anywhere from a few seconds to over 20 minutes to simulate the delay from the Moon or Mars. So, so in a nutshell, the, the purpose of these missions um, is to test as many uh, scientific experiments and technologies that are going to help prepare get humans to Mars. So we need to test the spacesuits, um, the communication systems, we bring rovers sometimes on some missions to test there, Recently, we had an experiment designed by students in Slovakia where we were collecting our hair from the crew members, oh, wow. um, dissolving it in various chemicals, and then using that as fertilizer. So, there's a lot of stuff we can do here. It's a great environment for that, and a really well built facility. stuff out of tubes and cans, that kind of thing. And so they were testing it for about four months and they found that the best food is actually the freeze-dried food because of the cooking element. The fact that you actually have to spend several hours rehydrating that food, cooking it in this big kitchen. So this is what freeze-dried carrots look like. Very unappetizing. So not appetizing. And then there's things like, you know, freeze-dried pineapple, for example. That's actually something tasty. Hopefully there's some left in here for you to try. This one you can actually munch on, so we do like to have that as a snack. And oh, that's a little bit there. That's nice. You know, and handy. It's pretty, you know, it has a nice smell and everything. Mm. Nice it's in the it. tropics. <laughs> like being in Hawaii, but not being, <laughs> not being, not Hawaii. being here really. Yeah. Hey, okay, well, let's have a look at the sleeping quarters upstairs. Each crew member gets their own room. So, a little bit of privacy. privacy. Yeah. So, this is an example. This was my commander's room. Yeah. Unfortunately, these walls aren't very thick. So, right. even if a person is snoring three doors down, you can, down, you can still hear it. Oof. But it's better than having it coming from both sides. You know, just yeah. one, one is enough. Exactly. And everything here is made to be, you know, accommodate as many things as possible. So, for example, this is your stool to sit on, you know, behind the table. Yeah. But it's also. Storage container. Oh, ah. clever. And I mean, it, it kind of works, but then if you imagine you maybe have your suitcase, which you know you could fit underneath, but maybe you have something else, suddenly it's like you can't really yeah. move around too much in here. I want to sit on the bed okay, and see how comfortable this is. Because if you're here for, you know, ostensibly eight months on a mission, you want to make sure that you're getting good sleep. Oh, it's, it's a foam mattress. It yeah, really yeah. Comfy. Okay. We try to make them be as comfortable as possible, oh. exactly for that reason. That's pretty good. I'm not going to put my <laughs> the pillow okay. should be fairly well, comfortable that, too. I mean, I'm on 511, so I could feasibly be keeping on without too much discomfort. I wouldn't want to be in the pillow though. Uh, we've had some 6'2 
two guys in here, okay. but I think they had to sleep diagonally. Right. <laughs> yeah, kind of like going to the corner. Yeah, but pillow. then you have to worry about you know, right. hitting your head on that. So it's yeah. a bit of a compromise. Yeah. You know? All right. well, I think maybe that's the life of the rat right after all. Well, this is definitely the smallest room in the habitat. And it's definitely one of the most important rooms right here. <laughs> like, we're very limited in the amount of time we can take a shower. So we have a timer just Every crew member has to record uh, the amount of time they shower for, and they're only allowed eight minutes per week. Whoa. So take that in, you know, eight minutes per week. So a minute a day and a little extra. Yeah, and then probably the most important element here is mm -hmm. the, the quote-unquote space toilet <laughs> slash compost toilet. So, so I've done my business. <laughs> let's, let's pretend, yeah, let's pretend yeah. that's We done. don't want to see that. <laughs> so then we have this basically material that's kind of to feed the microbes. Okay. And then there's a special spray for the microbes okay. to keep them happy. Right. Now you're going to take this handle out just here. Okay. And now clockwise, very, very important to go clockwise. clockwise. All right. And turn it until that hole comes back. And this way you're kind of mixing your new additions with what was there before. And then they're going to take their time, usually a few days to a few weeks, to digest what's going on in there. And then there's a drawer at the bottom where we can open up and get rid of um, stuff we don't want. Quite literally a crappy job. <laughs> don't just stay inside when they're on a mission. Wearing a simulated spacesuit, they can go on extravehicular activity, or EVA. They collect samples, biominerals, and help map out areas outside the habitat. Now, we venture outside. Almost. We have to go for the airlock system. Airlock first. <laughs> okay, so normally we would have someone on the inside, the so-called HABCOM, the main communicator from the habitat, who would start a countdown for us. So then we would have to wait here. We'd put our masks on. This. Yep. yep. The air oh, is all good to go. Thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Time to go to Mars. happening here on this volcano because Mount Aloha is still active so there might even be an eruption <laughs> so we need to monitor that be careful but we also monitor the weather uh, various um, gases in the air and things like that so they're relevant both to local research here in Hawaii but also to uh, planetary science research related to the moon and Mars. Who has to maintain all this? Uh, we have different scientists that maintain it. So when we're out of simulation, uh, we agree with them and we take them here, they do it themselves. But if something needs to happen during a simulated mission, then actually we come in here with spacesuits and then we have to, you know, do everything with these thick gloves. Something that would take five minutes without the spacesuit took us almost 45 minutes. Wow, I'm glad I'm not doing it today. Yeah. <laughs> It looks beautiful. I just, it's, it's, it's of this world yet of not of this world. Exactly. It is very, very unusual. But this kind of environment is what you would find on the surface of Mars or similar things on the moon. Because both planetary bodies um, have parts that are covered in kind of lava type material. So on Mars, you know, even the color is very similar to what we're walking on. It's actually geologically accurate and we can do scientific research relevant to studying you know, the surface of Mars. With a slightly different spacesuit, probably. Yes. <laughs> this is not quite what it would look like. I mean, you know, the surface of Mars, I mean, um, on Mars, you would only feel about a third of the gravity we feel here. So, you know, it's appropriate that the suits are a bit lighter, you know? <laughs> yeah. it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as heavy as the several hundred pound uh, spacesuits you have up in space. I mean, you can't even move around in those. Right. <laughs> well, this is heavy enough for me, I'm telling you. This is more than enough weight, more than enough constriction. Being at over 8,000 feet elevation, you really feel it. This is tough. Wow, that was 
something else. It was like being on another planet. I don't think I'm quite ready for Mars or the moon just yet, but that's exactly what it's going to be like. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I'll catch you next time. Subscribe, like, and share, and press notification bell for more upcoming videos.